ಹಾಯ್ ಹಲೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಮೀಡಿಯಂ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟು ಜಿಯಾಗ್ರಫಿಕಲ್ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೀ ಹಿಸ್ಟಾರಿಕ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ let's come to the what are the very important learning points from this lesson you will learn from this lesson the physical features of india india is both a subcontinent and peninsula recognize the neighboring countries of india the living style of man in prehistoric period the stone age so these are the learning points for the lesson so let's come to the what is the introduction for this lesson the geographical environment has influenced every country and people in the world obviously any country any nation it is quite common that geographical environment it is influenced to a country as well as people there is a inanimate relationship between human life and environment so it is a necessary to learn about the geographical environment in order to know about the human history so that india is called as a subcontinent why india is called as subcontinent because a continent to call as a continent it needs to be some certain features those are all the features it is having by india so that it is called as a subcontinent it is occupying a huge area in the southern part of asian continent as india is a subcontinent as it is surrounded by water on three sides and land on one side that is the reason india is called as peninsula why india is called as peninsula because on three sides it is covered by water and one side it is covered by land so this is the one side it is covered by land and remaining all the three side towards the west arabian sea towards the south indian ocean and towards the east bay of bengal so these are the three water bodies are covered on three side and this is the part of area it is covered by land whereas neighboring countries of india if you are going to be identify the neighboring countries of india before that the indian land frontier frontier nothing but it is called as the border border it is land border with 15200 kilometers so what you are seeing this is the part of area considered as the land frontier land border with 15200 kilometers and here this is the area called as the water frontier water frontier that is with 6100 km and states at present there will be a 28 states and eight union territories whereas delhi is considered as the national capital as well as union territory and as india considered as the second populated country in the world area wise india it will be stands in the seventh place according to 2011 census we can say it is 121 crore as neighboring countries of india if you are going to be identify so pakistan china nepal bhutan myanmar bangladesh sri lanka so these are the neighboring countries of india even afghanistan also considered as the neighboring countries of india when comes to the part of geographical features of india majorly the geographical features of india classified into four types among that the first one it is called as the himalayan mountains and the second one it is considered as the indo gangetic plain and the third one it is considered as the the deccan plateau and the fourth one it is considered as the the coastal region you can see 
the location as well as mark of the the four important geographical features of india let's come to the one by one in detail we are going to be get the information among that the first one the himalayan mountains you can see the location of himalayan mountains so it is completely covered with the snow capped mountains in the north include some of the tallest mountain peaks in the world are located in himalayan mountains they help to preserve the safety and security of india the part of so this area it is completely providing safety and security no other enemies they cannot attack from this part of area even the cold wind which is blow from this area it will be protected as protecting the part of this region and there have been very few institutions of on ancient india from the northern himalayan region it is also flourished on the himalayan mountains that is also one of the very important uh, uh, importance of the himalayan mountains we are going to be consider our himalayan region even the attacks have been mainly from the north western side till now those who are attacked on india they could not able to attack towards the part of himalayan region they mainly concentrated towards the north western side the valleys like bolan and khyber pass so if you are going to be identifying the picture that is called as the bolan pass that is it is a elevation of 1793.4 meter with 5884 feet that is traversed by national highway number 65 rahri chaman railway line that is location it is a balchistan located in pakistan range toba kakra range that is coordinates with 29 degree 45 minutes north and 67 degree 35 minutes east longitudes whereas khyber pass it is considered as the evolution of 1070 meters with in feet 3510 feet that is traversed by national highway number 5 khyber pass railway location between the landi kotal and jamrud range spingar or coordinates with 35 degree 75 minutes north latitude with 71 degree 71.2 degree with 39.4 degree east longitude so that is the khyber and bolan passes information which are passing through india and the second one very important physical feature of india that is called as indo gangetic plain this is considered as the the flat indo gangetic plains are extremely fertile lands whereas the ancient civilizations of indus valley and vedic period flourished here in next uh, lesson you are going to be get the more information about our ancient civilizations like indus valley our arappa civilization our mohenjadaro civilization even the concept of vedic period these are all the concepts are flourished in this area nothing but indo gangetic plains area many battles have been fought from the time to time to establish control over the area of indo gangetic plain to to capture to attack to over power this area many battles it has been fought from time to time usually the dynasties that established control over this fertile gangetic plains also established empires those who are established the dynasties they established empires in this region and the next third one the narmada river separates india into malwa plateau and deccan plateau 
So, whereas the Deccan Plateau majorly divided into two parts, Malwa Plateau and Deccan Plateau. Among that, Narmada River separates India into two plateaus, whereas you can identify the part of here. So, here the Narmada River. So, here it is the blue in color called as the river Narmada. River Narmada, it is divided into two parts that is Malwa Plateau and Deccan Plateau. Like that it is going to be divides. As the Deccan Plateau, the Mauryas and the Guptas ruled these two areas during the ancient India. These two regions were ruled by Mauryas and Guptas. So, that is about the information about Deccan Plateau. And the fourth one, the coastal region. So, India, the coastal lines, vast and structures over 6100 kilometers. You can see the blue in color, the part of coastal region. This part of coastal region, it is 6100 kilometers. The eastern coastal line is called as the Coromandel coast, whereas western coastal line is referred as the Konkan and Malabar coast. So, here basically coastal lines divided into western coastal line, eastern coastal line. Among that western coastal line is divided into two parts called as Konkan coast and Malabar coast, whereas this part of eastern coastal line is divided into as a Utkal coast and Koramandal coast. The numerous ports on this coastal line had attracted the Romans from ancient time immemorial. In these ports, many of the uh, Romans, Romans they have attracted to the part of reason. Foreign trade was carried on those days only through the sea routes because during those days there is no land route that is even today also the maximum trade route will be takes place with the help of coastline. As a result port towns flourished resulting in the rise of powerful kingdoms in south in south India like Pandyas the Cheras and the Cho Cholas, they flourished on the southern part of India or in the region of coastal regions. As India, it is called as the multicultured country. The diversity in the Indian geographical environment has also influenced the lives of communities living here. So, despite the communal diversity, there exists a cultural unity which blinds all these diversities. That is the reason it is called as India is a diversity country. So, as unity in diversity is the essence of this culture. So, this is about today's session. I hope you have understood till now what we are discussed. In case of if you are having any doubts related to till now what we are discussed. You can comment in the comment box. I will solve your doubts. And I will come back with the next video. Until keep watching my channel. Thank you. See you in the next session. Bye bye. Take care.